Hello Internet, Taliesin here, and today we are looking at Demon Hunters, the World of Warcraft class that's got the player base more excited than Bill Cosby with a new soda stream. If you don't know what I'm talking about here, then just take a trip to Stormwind or Orgrimmar and look around for about five seconds, because Demon Hunters are easy to spot, they're the ones that are fucking everywhere. Seriously, they're more common at the moment than disappointing DC movies, and it's easy to see why. It's because they look like this, or this. Or this. Well, not like this actually, but there's always next expansion. So join us as we do something a bit different for this channel and run through the A to Z of demon hunters in the world of Warcraft. Okay, go, 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 go. Arturus is one of the most memorable quest givers from the Burning Crusade expansion. A demon hunter brought to Outland by Illidan, now disapproving of his methods. His methods include killing thousands of innocent people, it's fair enough really. And striking out on his own. You destroy Legion Forge camps for him, you kill Illidari generals for him, but most importantly, he's in the Grand, which has amazing music, and he gives you free rides on his Nether Drake. And he's back in Legion. Although all those years in the Warden Prison have been kind to him, to be honest. He's kind of like the elven Mickey Rourke. But in the Demon Hunter starting experience, you must eventually choose between Altruus and Kane Sunfury to be your second in command. And it's not a hard choice, really, is it? Look, I mean, Kane is loyal, strong, and brave. Altruus gives you free rides on his Nether Drake. His Nether Drake. Yeah, thanks and everything, Kane, but me and Altruus have got this one. See you later. Black Temple, or the Ruins of Karabor in Outland, where Illidan is holed up in the Burning Crusade with his Demon Hunter forces. It's the final raid of that expansion, and climaxes with the killing of Illidan himself. Yeah, well done, adventurer. You're awesome. You killed Illidan. You're a badass. Oh, no, wait, you didn't, because just like Cory Feldman, you only assumed he was dead, but guess what? Cory Feldman is totally alive, and so is Illidan. More on that later. We go back to the very moment that final raid on Black Temple begins in the opening Demon Hunter cinematic, too, which is pretty awesome. And makes your not killing Illidan even less impressive, because it turns out that when you attacked in BC, all the best demon hunters were literally on a different planet doing something more important. But no, seriously, well done for beating Black Temple. You're awesome, really. Cordana Felsong, the Watcher who betrayed her sisters and teamed up with Gul'dan and the Legion, helping them to steal Illidan's corpse from the Vault of the Wardens on the Broken Isles. And let that be a lesson to you all, when an employee gets corrupted by Fel and betrays you to the Legion, change the locks. And look, I'm not saying she went evil because she spent all of that time in Warlord of Drain or hanging out with Khadgar, okay? I'm not saying that. I'm just pointing out that she spent most of Warlords hanging out with Khadgar, and now she's corrupted by the Legion. I'm just saying. D is for demons. Yeah, no shit. Sargaris's burning legion of demonic hordes are out to wipe out all life in the universe. For pretty good reasons, actually, but I'm not going to go into that here. And have been one of the biggest and most important antagonists in World of Warcraft from day one. And it's this third legion invasion that has scared the Watchers enough to release the demon hunters back into the world. And most Illidari will have seen their families and homes destroyed by demons. They hate them so much that they eat their hearts. And by the end, most demon hunters have actually become part part demon themselves, which is ironic really, it's a bit like if Trump always wore a sombrero, or if Adam Richman was actually part cow, I'm sure he wouldn't mind. Eridun, the demonic language that demon hunters can use to talk cross-faction. Yes, that's right, Horde and Alliance demon hunters can communicate with each other in-game. Trash talking battlegrounds, ahoy! And I don't see what can possibly go wrong there, seriously. And to get you into the mood, here's a little Eridun primer. Some of the few confirmed translations we have from Blizzard, no less. Dranai is an Eridun word, it means exiled ones. Arul Sach Kigon is I will eat your heart, and Katrasil Sukil is suffer and perish. So yeah, it's a really pleasant language. You can have lots of lovely conversations with that. Have fun. Fell is the Mountain Dew of World of Warcraft. It's green, it's sickly, and consuming it is going to fuck up your insides and turn you into a disgusting monster. Fell is where demons get their power, and it's a power that demands the draining of life from everything around it. It's bad news, and that's why the demon hunters want to wipe it out by using their secret weapon, Fell. All right, fuck. You see, this is why demon hunters are such tragic figures. They've made the ultimate sacrifice, filling themselves with fells so that they can destroy all the fell. Presumably the demon hunter endgame is where they've killed all the burning legion and they are the only fell beings left in the universe. And they have to kill themselves like T-800 at the end of Terminator 2. Still, it does give them some pretty nifty tattoos and horns. You know, swings and roundabouts. Gul'dan. Gul'dan and Illidan's fates have been weirdly woven together throughout the story of Warcraft, where they've conducted a weird necro-romance. First Illidan was alive and Gul'dan was dead, and Illidan stole Gul'dan's skull to gain immense power. Now Gul'dan, AU Gul'dan, is alive and Illidan is dead, and Gul'dan has stolen Illidan's corpse to... 
Well, we'll see. But at the moment, the whole thing is like a fucked up, fell powered weekend at Bernie's. Oh, and don't forget, when Gul'dan brings Illidan back to life, he still has all of Gul'dan's memories from his dead skull. That's gonna be a conversation worth hearing. Unlike any other class in the game, Demon Hunters only get two specs, and Havoc is one of them. Havoc is the melee DPS spec, because yeah, I know, what your raid team really needs is another melee DPS, right? With a skill ceiling about as high as Daniel Radcliffe on a pocket bike to boot. But I'm gonna be honest, it's hard to stay salty when it's this much stupid fun. And disengage, and charge! Oh, it's awesome. Cry Havoc, let's slip the dogs of Warcraft. That's almost Shakespeare that I did just there, because we're all about culture on this channel. Illidan Stormrage, the betrayer, the original, the big one. One of the most iconic and important characters in World of Warcraft, and deserving of much more than the 30 seconds I'm going to give him here. It's possible Illidan has been given a bad rap over the years, but in fairness, he did create a second world of eternity, team up with the demons, pretend to team up with the demons, get put in jail for 10,000 years, get let out, get kicked by the future Lich King, hide from demons, kill like loads of people, get kicked by anyone that ran Black Temple, and be slightly underwhelming in Heroes of the Storm. And now he's back in what is definitely a redemption story line, Metzen loves the redemption, but it is interesting that as a demon hunter, you get to choose between a path of following Illidan or thinking he's a bit of a douche, and it'll be fun to see just how far down that not liking Illidan path we're allowed to go. Will he be a raid boss? Will he help out in a fight like Grom Hellscream? Yeah, that's that's right Grom, you just keep spinning kind of near the boss, that's really helpful, thanks. Uh, at some point he's going to have to lead an army of light with a halo around his head as per the Naru vision, but that's a question for Metzen. J is for jump, and also jump, because demon hunters bring with them the staple of all modern MMOs, the double jump, and though goblins with rocket boosters don't count. Combined with their graceful glide ability, it's graceful when some people do it, okay? Demon hunters have a mobility that other classes can only dream of, except survival hunter, obviously, with their amazing grappling. <laughs> no, I'm only joking, obviously. Sorry, survival hunter, fuck you. As the main quest giver throughout the Demon Hunter starting experience, Blood Elf Kane Sunfury is the most memorable of all the new Demon Hunter NPCs we meet in Legion. The RPer in me likes to think that his family seat is located at Sunfury Spire in Silvermoon. That's when the RPer in me isn't dancing naked on the mailbox in Goldshire, obviously, which is most of the time, let's be honest. Fearless, honourable and devout, Kane fights by your side over a period in game that actually spans about 10 years. He's the Cheech to your Chong, the Foggy to your Matt Murdock, but never once gives you a free ride on a Nether Drake. So sorry Kane, but when the time comes, we're going with Altruis. He's got Nether Drakes, you understand. So before hard details about Demon Hunters were properly known, there was only one thing that everyone was certain of. The new class would wear mail. Obviously, because that would give all armor types in game the same amount of classes fighting over them, and that just makes perfect sense, that's obvious. It turns out that like covering up nipples or having eyes, mail isn't really a Demon Hunters thing. In fairness, that does make a lot more sense. So sorry Druid, Monk and Rogue, but your odds of winning that agility leather drop in the Emerald Nightmare just got a little bit longer. The Demon World of Mardom is where the first part of the Demon Hunter starting experience takes place, and it's really pretty cool. When Sargaris was a good guy titan, Mardom is the planet that he founded as his demon prison, using it to store up all of the nastiest, most dangerous and deranged demons he could find in one hideous place. Basically like the B message board on 4chan, but a whole planet. When he turned into bad guy titan, Sargaris shattered the planet, enlisted all the demons as his troops, and lo, the Burning Legion was born. In the Demon Hunter starting experience, we're there because we want to get hold of the Sargarite Keystone that will allow us access to any demon world, including Argus. I don't expect this to be the last you've heard of that idea in Legion, okay? Oh, it's also where the Demon Hunter class order hall is situated, so you know, I hope you like green and floating rocks, I hope that's your thing, because you're going to be seeing a lot of it. Netherel is a night elf demon hunter who is training apprentices at the ruins of Karabor at the Black Temple in Burning Crusade, and one of four named NPCs that you have to kill for the Burning Crusade quest, Varedis, must be stopped. But the reason he's in this list is because Netherel was one of only two demon hunter NPCs with a Landon Theras who could be pickpocketed by rogues. And this meant that if you had the Glyph of Disguise, you could become a demon hunter for five glorious minutes. And the days before Transmog, this was as good as it got. So Netherel will always have a special place in our hearts. O is for one in five. The process of becoming a demon hunter is long 
and very dangerous. What with all the demon heart eating, ritual blindness, and gradual osmosis of demonic energies, only one in five apprentices survive the process. Now, this is all explored in pretty lurid detail in William King's Illidan novel, but be warned, if in-depth descriptions of the repeated eating of demon hearts is likely to make you feel queasy, then seriously, avoid this book, because it's basically a demon heart eat-a-thon, I'm not even joking. Even for a fully-fledged demon hunter, those fell energies can be pretty dangerous and push you over the edge at any moment. Just ask Manetherel. Okay, make that one in six. Sorry, Manetherel. Pain is, fittingly, what Vengeance Demon Hunters use as their main resource, with their tanking gameplay being a familiar rotation of building pain with some abilities and spending it on mitigation and cooldowns. I guess it could be seen as receiving pain until you're satisfied and then giving some pain back. There's a book in there somewhere. Q is for QQ, which is what all warlocks did when Demon Hunters stole their metamorphosis ability, and I don't blame them. The Ravencrests were the Lords of Black Rook Hold, which stood firm against the Burning Legion in the War of the Ancients, until Lord Ravencrest, who was once also a mentor to Illidan, was assassinated on the orders of Queen Ashara. We meet his daughter, Ilisana, in the Mardum starting area, where she's on our side, and we're going back to see her in Legion when she's not, because the Legion have now taken over Black Rook Hold and reanimated Lord Ravencrest, essentially as a sick joke for their own amusement, and Ilisana is back trying to defend it by being a boss. And obviously when I say boss, I don't mean in a good way like Bruce Springsteen, she's not going to invite you on stage to dance, I mean in a bad way like, thanks for all the help on Mardo Melisana, but now I'm going to kill you for fat loot, that kind of boss. Spectral Sight. The Demon Hunter ability that lets them see treasures and enemies even behind walls. Super handy also if you ever want to check to see if someone who you think is your friend is actually a dreadlord in disguise. Not that that would ever come in useful, I mean... Oh. Oh, okay, we should probably move on. When you kill a demon in the mortal realm, they don't die, they simply return to the Twisting Nether, ready to come back again and cause you more grief. The only way to really kill them is to go to the Twisting Nether and kill them there. It's like when you think you delete your browsing history, isn't it? Because you, know, you never really delete your browsing history, do you? You'd have to find the Google servers and actually physically break them. It's a right pain. Probably best just to not search for Overwatch Born in the first place, to be honest. And slightly disturbingly, that's what happens to demon hunters too. When they die, they are explicitly in the Twisting Nether looking for another body. It's probably best not to think too much about that one either. Okay, let's face it, there are three reasons that you're playing Demon Hunter. The left war glaive, the right war glaive, and those cool ass tattoos that make almost anyone look cool. And the last thing you want to do is cover them up with boring ass armor just to protect you from all the demons trying to kill you, is it? And Blizzard knows that, which is why a lot of armor leather sets have their own unique, more revealing models for demon hunters in Legion, specifically so that they can show off their awesome fell ink. Basically, every demon hunter set is now a slut mog, and that's a quality right there, or something. Vengeance is the Demon Hunter tank spec and uses a mixture of parrying and self heals to stay alive. Now, as it is one of only two specs that Demon Hunters can roll, it's a shame that at the time of writing it feels a little bit underpowered. It's kind of like if you were only allowed to have two DVDs and one of them was Age of Extinction. But just like everything Demon Hunter, it looks super cool and is really fun to play. And come on, they metamorphosize into this for fuck's sake. Now the reason you've got a demon hunter to glide around with at all in the first place is all because of these ladies. An order created by the first warden, Maev Shadowsong, specifically to keep tabs on Illidan while he was in prison for 10,000 years. Now, the wardens, and specifically Maev, have been on the demon hunter's case ever since. Locking you up too, and after you've killed the brood queen and everything, I ask you. Now, your character of course gets off after only 10 years because the demons attack, the wardens have a panic and let you out. But I've got a feeling that we're going to see the Illidari and their former captors working together to overcome the legion in this expansion. Although I definitely want to be in the room where May Evan and Illidan get back together. That is going to be like Pat Butcher and Peggy Mitchell with bells on. Illidan is Peggy, obviously. Peggy with war glaives. Oh fuck, W is also for war glaives! Of course, why did I do all that stuff about the wardens? X is the shape your badass war glaives make on your back and make you look totally badass. And if you think that is tenuous, wait for... Y is for... Look, Y is a really hard one, okay. Z is for Zot, the artist of that awesome piece of art that I used at the very beginning of the video, Zabados Zot. And if I pronounce that wrong, then I just want you to know, I've done that on purpose, okay? I could easily pronounce it right if I wanted, I just didn't want to. And the fan art dimension is really important, really interesting, I think, because it does kind of bring it home just how excited people have been about demon hunters. Now, I looked at a lot of fan art making this video, and there's no getting away from it. 
Demon Hunters are fucking cool. I hope you've enjoyed the video today. If you did like it, you can like it if you like, and subscribe if you subscribe, then I promise we will make more videos. If you didn't like it, downvote the shit out of it, and remember, my name is the Warcraft Bible. Oh, <laughs> no. My name is Taliesin of Taliesin and Evertel. Check out some of our other videos on screen now. Join us on Twitter at Taliesin Evertel too, why not? Next video we'll see normal service being resumed a bit more, I think. It's going to be our Legion tank review, but thanks for sticking with us through this one. And until next time, team, cheerio.